Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22. I'm an old guy gaming, and in this episode, we are going to uh, get our new field plowed and expanded and ready for planting barley next month. So it is August the 3rd, and if we look at our crop calendar here, um, barley, we could either plant wheat or barley next month, uh, but I'm probably going to do barley just because barley's a little bit more valuable than wheat, typically. And that way, if, you know, if we ever wanted to sell the excess, well, is it actually? The nice thing about the barley, though, is we can we can harvest it a month earlier. So three ninety three is the max price there. Oh, I guess wheat actually does get a little higher than barley. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to think about that some more. Uh, like I said, the barley we can harvest a month earlier. So if for no other reason, that's probably why we would do barley over wheat then. Uh, but anyway, so let's see. We're going to have to get some equipment to, to do this work. So let's open up the shop here. Um, this is a modded cultivator that I installed a while back. It's absolutely enormous. It's 24 meters. Um, and it's 56% off, but it's still $85,000. And we, we're already in, in debt, even though it's temporary to the bank for $200,000. So um, that's something I'd like to get at some <laughs> At some point, look at this thing. It's just a monster. Uh, but our fit could run it because it's a 500 horse. Um, but we can't afford that right now. So we're going to have to let that one go. Hopefully, it'll come up again later when we have some more money. All right. So what we need to do is go to here. And I have uh, installed a mod, a modded subsoiler that I'm not seeing in here. Did it get put somewhere else? Plows. Oh, it's right here. It's under plows. Okay. So this is a lizard um, subsoiler, and there is a nine meter version of this sucker. Um, and it's actually not too expensive. We're going to, I can't afford to buy it right now, but we can lease it. Um, so we're going to lease this for the field work that we're going to do. Um, it's only cost us $969. And I, I have the other, I have two other um, four meter subsoilers too. Um, so that way between myself and two workers, we can, we can get going on all that. Um, I don't probably have to plow field 57, the part that's actually a field, but I'm going to, anyways, I'm just going to plow the whole thing for two reasons. One, I don't know when it will be, you know, need to be plowed again, because I do have periodic plowing on a and B, if we subsoil the whole thing, we don't have to worry about weeds. Um, so that that's why we're going to do it that way. Okay, now we're also going to need to go into, let's see, forestry equipment. And we're going to lease once again um, the uh, the mulcher uh, because we're gonna, we, we have some trees that we need to remove um, and some stumps to grind up. So we got that. And I'm also going to lease under telehandler tools um, this log fork. And, and again, we're just going to lease this. It's only going to be 168 bucks. And the reason we're doing that is because uh, there's a there's a few trees out on that field that are pretty good size. Look, goodness gracious, look at this thing. It's awesome. Uh, that are pretty good size. I mean, they're, they'll be worth selling. But because we're so close to the carpentry shop, um, I'm probably just going to just drive the trees down in the telehandler um, and not even try and mess with trying to load them into a trailer. Okay, so that is the plan for all of that. Um, let's see. We're going to want to use the Fint. For the big subsoiler. Oh, you know what though? We can't use that for field creation. We can only use it for. Yeah, right. Okay. What is, uh, what is the horsepower requirement on that thing? It is 320. Okay, so the New Holland can run this on the normal field. Um, it'll be. Just a couple of points above. I think the New Holland's 312 horse, something like that. But you know, if, it, if it's a couple of horse off, it's not gonna not gonna be a big deal. Um, so <clears throat> because I want to use the Fint for uh, the new field creation. Well, I guess we don't really have to. We could use the New Holland for that. Yeah, maybe we will. Okay, so let's do this then. Oh, by the way. Uh, you may notice too that I have, uh, if you if you look on the right hand side of my screen, I now have auto drive installed and I have course plate installed. Um, we're gonna mess with those later. We're not gonna mess with those in this episode. But my plan for 
for them. Oh, come on. I'm like, pay attention, OG. Uh, my plan for those is that I have a... I've been watching some videos on those. And you can set up course play uh, and auto drive to almost fully automate um, various tasks, including bailing and loading bales and stuff like that. So I want to mess with those a little bit and see if I can't get that to work reasonably well. I'm just looking here real quick. Um, okay. So this thing is supposed to fold. Whoops. But it's not. Did I do I have to hook I do I have to hook up some lines to this? Oh there we go. Okay. So yeah, this thing actually folds up too, which is really cool. Um we might we'll probably end up buying one of these. Uh, when they oh I forgot to put that fertilizer back in and I'll do that later um so yeah let's just get a worker going on on plowing the existing field and we'll actually probably get two workers going on that and I'll worry about expanding the field while they're doing that uh, so we'll get the big guy going on this but anyway um, if you don't know what course play and auto drive are course play is basically allows you to automate field work that's primarily designed for you to use on a field um, and basically what you can do is you can map out a course on a field and you can do things like either up and down or spirals and have have it do headlines and it basically does very similarly to what you know the AI does in the base game except for it's a lot more intelligent and you know than than what the base game does uh, so we're gonna mess with that and then you could kind of think of auto drive as a way to automate courses off the field in other words uh, you can set up a course so you can tell a tractor to load up um, you know some hay and then drive it down to the bio plant and drop it off and then come back and get another load and you can automate that full process because it takes me hours uh, real-time hours many hours on in January to haul all that hay to the market and haul all the pallets to the market and stuff like that and so um, I want to see if I can try and automate that and you know it, it would be very similar here let's get started here it would be very similar to uh, you know just hiring workers which you kind of do but the workers will basically be more capable they'll be a little smarter than just what the base game workers can do and with a lot less babysitting for me and it'll just save us time plus it'll be fun too uh, okay so let's just let you go go to your thing and um, let's run back here while we're here we might as well give the cows a little more TMR we're gonna have to do another mixture here pretty soon I think okay uh, I actually need the McCormick too so let's actually pull the mixer wagon out because it looks like it's empty or very nearly empty and so we'll do another mixture later on not gonna worry about that right now so and so what you can do is you know you can automate mowing and windrowing and baling and picking up hay and stuff like that and so what my thought is is I want to try and see if I can you know use auto drive and course play to set up an automated loose silage operation with the largest forage wagons that we can use um, and using a fermenting silo because if we use a fermenting silo we just have to pick the grass off the field in a forage wagon dump in the silo and that's it and the silo takes care of the rest there's no messing around with wrapping or having to you know use tubes or load bales or compact in a bunker silo you just dump the grass in the silo the silo does all the work for you and then you know after a certain period of time goes by it turns into silo and uh, or i'm sorry silage and then you offload it and take it to market so you know if we if we can automate that process if we can get large capacity trailers and large capacity silos that could be worth doing um and make it, you know, 
um, comparable to, uh, or even maybe even better, more efficient than using bales, considering all the work that goes into making these bales and then having to, you know, handle them multiple times and all of that. Now, I'm not, I don't know for sure if I'm going to be able to get that to work, but that's kind of what I'm going to try and do. And, you know, we'll just, we'll just see how that works. So, anyway, I'm kind of excited to try it. It's really neat what those, those mods are, are capable of doing. Okay, anyway, let's get... Uh, we need to get out our... Well, we're going to actually need to get out our, our stone pickers, too, because we're going to need those, and I might even lease a third one so we can have three tractors going at the same time. Uh, but we need to get the subsoilers out from behind there, too. So let's just park the Mac over, or not the Mac, the man, man truck over here for now. And then we'll grab the stone pickers and we'll pull them out and keep them handy because we are going to need them too. kind of funny I, when I hook up to this with the McCormick I don't have to uh, hook up the hoses but when I use the the New Holland I also have to hook up the hoses it's really weird so we'll grab the other one <clears throat> And then what I'll do is I'll get the McCormick started on the opposite end of the field with one of these subsoilers. And then, you know, they'll meet in the middle at some point. Oh, that's not exactly what I had in mind. But we got to get that out too, I suppose. <laughs> that was weird. It reached through the stone picker and grabbed the subsoiler. Oh, that thing's upside down. What in the world? Oh, because I think it flipped it. All right, here, let's just um, see if we can put this back right side up. Now, I have another announcement for you guys, and that is that at some point in the fairly near future, and I can't tell you exactly when because I don't really know myself, at some point in the fairly near future, we're going to wrap up our Greenhorn series here on Elm Creek. Um, but what I'm planning on doing is I'm planning on continuing the story of OG um, and moving to a new map as the same character with all of his experience and money and well probably not assets we'll probably end up selling off all of his equipment except for his pickup truck uh, and move to a new map but we'll bring you know all the money with us and I, I'm, I'm kind of working on a little just just a light fun role play story for that it, you know I mean the role plays just kind of a, a fun side thing but it's not really the you know the main thing that we do um, and that's come gonna come up fairly soon and I already have a map picked out it's a map that's just uh, I mean I've been I've been looking at a lot of different maps I've been watching um, you know YouTube videos of, of map uh, reviews and previews and stuff like that and this map is just one that, you know, I mean, I fell in love with it the, the first time I, I've seen it, or I saw it. Uh, why isn't that disconnecting? There we go. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you what the map is until the time comes, because it's going to be kind of a, a little bit of a surprise. Actually, I didn't want to take that off. I'm busy yapping here, not paying attention. So, you know, that's not going to happen tomorrow, of course. Um, I still... You know, there's still some things that I want to accomplish here on Elm Creek. But it's going to happen fairly soon. 
but that's really all I can tell you. I'm not, I can't even define necessarily what fairly soon is, but I'm just letting you know that I'm starting to, to think and plan in that direction. Oh uh, man, it should be a lot of fun. So yeah, very cool. All right, let's get this guy over uh, to the to field 57 and get it started, him, her, whatever, on the opposite end from uh, from the fent. And at some point, they'll meet somewhere in the middle. The fent will definitely make a lot more progress than the McCormick just because it's got a lot larger plow to work with. What I might actually do with you... Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Let's let's start him on this end, and and let's see if he'll be able to keep going. Because sometimes when they get to the curve, they stop, and, and that's one of the things that course play will fix. All right. Now I don't want this to be on. Oh man, I can't. I can't tell if if it's on field mode or not because there's a bunch of new stuff in our our thingy here. Well, it doesn't matter because I'm actually going to plow this part anyway. Okay, it's not. All right, that's good. Okay, so let's just get him started here and turn him loose. And he might stop when he gets to the curve or he might be smart enough to turn around we'll just wait and see is the fence still going uh yes it is okay i could barely barely see it off in the distance there i just want to see what this guy's going to do when he gets to the end here Okay, he looks like he knows he needs to turn around and go the other direction, so maybe this will work. Okay, cool. So let's let let him go to it. All right, let's go back to our New Holland. And we're going to... Uh, let's yeah we're gonna have to do the forestry stuff first well we can actually we can take the plow with us though it'll give us a little weight on the back anyhow and we'll have to drive the telehandler over here to get the log fork There we go. All right. I did a couple of small fertilizer contracts. Um, and I used manure for most of those, but I had to use granular for the for the tail end of the last one because I ran out of manure. I, I topped off my greenhouses first. And, uh, yeah, so we're pretty much out of manure. Well, I guess we're not completely out. That was that was two in-game days ago though also, so there is that. Alright, so let's see. Any any small trees we're just gonna mulch. I'm not messing with them, they're not worth it. So let's switch to the mulcher and turn it on. And we're just gonna chew up this tree. sure we get the stump too what we might end up doing is this next tree is a little bit larger 
I suppose we could run one of them down and just see how much money we get for it. Okay, so let's do this. Let's um let's run over and grab the telehandler and get the log fork. You know, we could have maybe even used the bag handler. Hmm. That's an interesting thought. Maybe we could maybe then we could like drag the the tree, but nah, let's let's use the log fork. I sort of kind of push the boundaries of what's <laughs> of what's realistic using that bag handler anyways, but it's just so useful. Very useful. Okay, yeah, let's go get the log fork. Okay, so what we want to do is cut the tree this way. Oh, I can clean up that little chunk with the saw. That's nice and useful. Um, I guess I could just use Lumberjack, actually, to remove these stumps. I, I think the forest remulcher is a little more realistic, though. Uh, now, normally, if, if I was actually trying to make um, money off this wood, I would... Um, I would, you know, I'd delimit and, you know, get the branches off, but I really just want to get rid of the doggone thing. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab it right on the end of the trunk here. Trying to get the forks under a little bit better. Well, as long as he keeps a hold of it, this should work. Okay, let's just see if we can run this down to the to the sawmill and see how much we get for it as is without having to mess with it too much. I might have to re-grasp it. We'll just see. Well, that car is going to be an interesting uh, problem. I got to get it over to here. Okay, let's see what we get for this. Six dollars. <laughs> see, that's why we don't bother with this, you guys. Six dollars. Are you kidding me? Okay, we're grinding them up. I mean, we might not even do the big ones. I don't know. We'll, we'll try one big one. <laughs> Six dollars. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, man. I mean, I was thinking maybe we'd get like $60, but not $6. That's terrible. Maybe I should con Larry the Landscaper into coming in taking the trees off the land and tell him he can keep the value of the timber. <laughs> Just don't tell him it's only going to be six bucks or so. Oh, boy. Okay. Well, let, let's try one of the big trees. Um, we'll try it. It's a big one. I 
I don't even really have a super good hold on this one either, but it seems to be working. Alright, let's see what we get for this. $25! Yeah, I don't... It's not worth it, you guys. It just isn't. I mean, seriously. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's worth pulling the big ones down here. It's not that far. Considering what a pain in the neck it's probably going to be to grind them with a small mulcher. But anything less than the big ones, and forget it. We're grinding them up. Okay, so it looks like our guys are done. Are very nearly done, which is great. Okay, so all of those trees are small or medium. There is one big tree over here. I suppose we could grab that one. Uh, but let's come over here with the mulcher and get rid of that little tree first. Five dollar make you holla. All right. Okay, I'm not sure if my property line comes to this big tree here. Uh, let's take a look, see. So if we go into here and then, where are we at? Here. So, so we're backed all the way up against that tree, and the property line stops before that tree. So, okay, so we're not, we don't need to take that tree out. Uh, but there's two trees across the way that are large that we'll grab that have to come out because I want to plow up that area too. I want to maximize what we can get out of this field. I'm not going to go all the way to the road, though. We'll probably go to... You know, maybe the edge of the grass or maybe a little further than that. But I, we will leave a little bit of a shoulder here. Tell you what. Let's get um, our workers going on stone picking. Uh, yeah. And we're actually done with this disc arrow, or not disc arrow, uh, subsoiler anyways, because <clears throat> I can't use it to create fields. So we're going to have to use the smaller ones for everything else. Uh, so we might as well return this. There's no point in hanging on to it. Yeah, I don't think we need to hang on to it. So let's return this. We're not getting another hourly fee on it. And let's also have the uh, uh, actually, you know what? I, I want to use the fit for. I want to use the fit. So we'll have the New Holland and the McCormick do the stone picking. Pick up rocks, dude. Okay, go to it. Farmer's working over there. Perfect. Okay. All right, let's get this tree delivered.
24 bucks for that one. Must have scraped some bark off it on the way. <laughs> Okay, I think this is the last tree we're going to sell. $25 on that one. We didn't scrape the bark. So, yeah, let's get going on uh, get the rest of the, the trees and brush out of the way, and then we'll get started plowing. Okay, the first thing I have to remember is what key puts this into plow mode because it's not showing up here. Is it Y? Yes, it's Y. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Now, what we want to do is we want to go Alt C. Control. Is it Control C or Alt C? How do I start uh, GPS? Guidance steering. Alt C toggles it. Oh, can you not use this with a plow? Because all it's doing when I press Alt-C is just changing my view because it's the C key. Oh, man, maybe you can't use it with a plow. Okay. Well, that sucks. That would have been nice uh, to have, you know, for the straight line. So I guess we're going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. Uh, all right. Well, that being the case... Uh, what I want to do for this edge of the field is I want to pretty much just come right to the edge of the grass. I'm not sure how far this way we're going to go, though. We don't really want to be right up against this box, though, either. So, why don't we start maybe right about here and what I'm gonna have to do is look use the mini map and point the tractor as close to zero degrees as I can possibly get it and we just want to keep this as, as close to zero degrees as possible so we have a nice straight line zero point one is fine too we can work with that. All right, so we're basically going to take this all the way down. Now, I believe we can go all the way to the edge of this road. Uh, nope. We can't go all the way to the edge of it. That's as far as we can go. Okay. That's actually good, though, because then this edge, since we can't plow past it, uh, it'll be pretty easy for us to do. Now, for some weird reason, if you guys were watching my mini-map, I... I was on zero degrees almost this entire run, but it looks, oh, actually, no, we, yeah, no, we did, we did have a, have it go in just a little bit here, which is really strange. Huh, I wonder why it did that. Okay, well, let's... Let's see if we can fix that. It means we got to go one more time out this way. I know it's not that big of a deal, but it's going to bug me if I don't get it exactly the way I want it. But one thing we are going to do is we're going to save. That way if I royally screw something up, I can at least reload. Okay, so we have to figure out just the right spot here. I think it's going to be... No, I gotta get over just a little more. All 
All right, nice. So we have a nice clean straight line all along this edge of the field. It's a beautiful thing. Okay, now we're gonna work on this end. And in theory, if we just kind of put the plow a little bit over the edge, it should just automatically work for us. Um, assuming the property line is perfectly straight. So let's do another save here. Oh, okay, wait a minute. So it's just that. Oh, well, that was that's weird. Okay. Um we want to be at 270 degrees here. And it's letting me plow there. So if we look at the map, you can see the edge is not quite to the edge of this road, but it does look like it's perfectly straight. I think we are just right on the money there. Okay, we know we can go all the way to where I was mulching because it wouldn't have let me tear up the ground there if that wasn't my property. But it's going to be right about at that point that it's going to stop. Yep, look at that. All right, nice. Now this, we could pick an angle. Let's look at the map again. I mean, this shows a pretty straight angle going this way, whatever that angle happens to be. So theoretically, if we just plow kind of over the center of it, It should. Oh, that's weird. Okay, so that's, that's a spot there that we can't get to. What if I just kind of keep plowing along this way? Yeah, I think I'm too far over. Well, I'm obviously too far over. Okay, so let's pick up the plow. What happens if we start right on this mulch line here? Maybe a little bit over it. That's weird. It stops right there. I know what's going on here <clears throat> it's got yeah okay so if we look at the map again um see how it's kind of got these little seesaw jagged edges that's what we're running into okay so what i might do is just keep doing what i'm doing and then i can use the landscaping tool to kind of clean clean up the edge of it at the end. I'm going to leave a little bit more of a shoulder on this side than I did on the other side. Okay, now we're going to start turning up this way. I 
And I think for up here, I'm just going to go one plow's width over and that's it because I don't want to get too close to the train tracks and we want to be at about 90 degrees here which we pretty close pretty close to just have like a little round corner there all right, so let's see. I got off a couple spots around here. Uh, did I, or is that the grass? Yeah, I think so. So let's fix this. Okay, that looks good. AI Worker G has a full tank. Um, this, yeah, we could probably fix this. It's a little harder on the road because the road's not straight. It's kind of curved, so but at least this one spot I think we can do. Okay, so um, now we just have to fix this, which I think I'm going to mostly do with uh, the landscaping tool. But what I am going to do is I'm going to start right here. I'm going to just kind of make a straight-ish line to the bush. There's that one spot. Those weird spots right there. That is bizarre, man. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what to do about those. Why would those be there? That is really weird. Oh. Okay, I can cut them that way. If we come over here, we can kind of get them if the tractor's further on our land, but that makes me wonder though if that's going to cause us problems later, even though I can plow it right now. It's kind of like the same thing where you get a little bit of loose hay off the field and but you can still grab it if the tractor's still on the field kind of thing. Okay. Well, here's what we're going to do. Uh, first thing we got to do is let's get these guys um, offloaded. We're going to have to fix the rest of this with landscaping. And there's that spot there too. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back in a little bit, just because I'm afraid if we're right on the verge and maybe hanging over it a little bit, we're gonna have trouble potentially, uh, you know, with harvesting crops and stuff. So let's bring this out to about here, and we have kind of a general straightish line going along here for the most part. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to do this. We lose a little bit of field there, but it's going to make harvesting the field a lot easier doing that. And we're just going to turn all this back into grass. All right. 
Now, let's go to painting and the plants and um, I want to go hog wild with this because it gets really expensive. I think that's probably good enough there. Maybe put a little bit of grass in there. All right, can I get this back off of here by going to painting and asphalt? A little bit of gravel there. Okay, I think that's good. Yep, and then, then we'll just do our plow line along here and call it good because I don't want to take any chances, again, like I said, of it of us being so far over that we we can't plant there or it lets us plant but not harvest you know that kind of thing and i think that should work all right guys so yeah the, so i'm basically just gonna plow in the rest of um everything you see here uh we might have to fix that too yeah it looks like i have a couple more spots to fix there but this is nice and straight till it starts to curve oh let's fix this I just screwed it up. Well, I'll I'll use the plow to round that back out. Um, and then we'll just put a little bit of grass in here. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna plow the rest of this in and add it all to the field to finish getting the stones picked up. And uh, let's see, we're gonna need to lime the field, we're gonna need to fertilize the field, and then plant. And we're gonna plant barley. Uh, so we will be we'll need to do that next month, and we'll also have our own hay to do next month too. And uh, depending upon how things go, I might play around a little bit with uh, course play and auto drive for our own hay. And yeah, go from there. So that is it for this episode. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.